Newton was a smart guy. If Newton had just come up with laws one and two, it would have been enough to completely reform all of our ideas about science and set us on the path of modern physics. We would have understood how force creates and modifies motion, how force causes change in motion. It's such an essential idea, and it's so universal in its applications. But Newton didn't stop there. Newton came up with all sorts of other ideas. And in fact, the next idea that we're going to talk about is so central to dynamics, the explanation of why things move the way they do, that it's called Newton's third law. So what's Newton's third law about? Let me give you a practical example. I got a nail and I'm hammering it. This is physics. I'm doing something. You'd like to be able to explain and understand the motion of what? There's a hammer, there's me, there's the nail, lots of things. So you focus your attention on something. The nail is probably the center of our attention. And it's Newton's second law, which tells us what's going on. F equals ma. So let's just stop and think about Newton's second law for just a second. F equals ma. Here's a picture of the hammer hitting the nail. We're focusing our attention on the nail. And it, a lot of lovely artwork here. But when you're trying to understand what's going on in physics, fortunately for me, we can draw a nail like this. So there's my little square nail. And I would like to draw a picture, a schematic representation of the forces acting on the nail. There is certainly a very big downward force, which I might write carefully as the force on the nail by the hammer. This is going to be my notation. The first subscript is, what's the object we're focusing our attention on? And then, who's doing the pushing? The force on the nail by the hammer is downward. If I was in outer space and I whacked a nail, what would happen? Well, while the hammer was in contact, there would be this big force. The nail would accelerate in the direction of the force. That's Newton's second law. And at a certain point, when I pulled the hammer back, there would be no more force. No more force doesn't mean the nail would come to a halt. The nail would keep on going with a constant velocity forever. In the real world, I'm hammering into some wood, very complicated physics of what's going on. There's a lot of wood friction, which is opposing the motion. There are upward forces, and we might label them the force on the nail by the wood. And this might be the result of multiple different forces. And the acceleration of the nail is the vector sum. That's Newton's second law of this vector and that vector. They're partially canceling, so it doesn't accelerate downward as much. In fact, the deeper it goes, the bigger the upward forces. At a certain point, these cancel. And even this one can overcome this force and bring it to a halt. But at the moment that we're hammering, I know very much that the most important force is FNH. That's the significant one that's driving the nail. In life, whenever you've got something that's feeling forces, it's an object which is being acted upon. Whenever there's a push E, there's always a pusher. It's true in every physics problem. And sometimes you just want to focus your attention on one object, but sometimes you're interested in the other object. What happens to the hammer? I'm driving this nail. What's going on with the hammer? Just think about its motion for a second. It is going down. And then it hits the nail, and it comes to a halt. So it had an initial velocity, which is down, and a final velocity, which is 0. So what's the change in its velocity? It was down. It ends up 0. The change is up. What can create a change in velocity, which is upward? That means an upward acceleration. What causes upward accelerations? Upward forces. Newton's second law insists that the nail which is the only thing touching the hammerhead in this situation, has got to be pushing up on the hammerhead. Now, to be honest, there's probably all sorts of other forces involved. So here's the hammerhead. And it certainly will feel an upward force. It's the force on the hammer by the nail. And then there might be other forces. There might be gravity pulling it down a little bit more, and there might be me pushing it down. But the important thing, the thing which is causing it to come to a halt, is this force. So Newton is thinking about the object which is applying the force and the object which is being forced, the hammer and the nail. And how does FHN, 
relate to FNH? How does the force on the hammer by the nail relate to the force on the nail by the hammer? They're clearly in different directions. And Newton came up with the correct, experimentally correct result. Not only are they opposite in directions, they're exactly opposite in directions. And even better than that, their magnitudes are exactly equal. The force, the magnitude of the force on the hammerhead is exactly equal to the magnitude of the force on the nail. Let me write this down for you. It's kind of wordy, but the idea here is Whenever an object A exerts a force on an object B, so this might be the hammer on the nail, then the object B, the nail, will always exert a force back on the first one. Always. It's a universal law of nature. It doesn't matter what things are made of or where they are. Object B exerts a force back on A, and the two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to each other. It's simple to state. It's a conceptually fairly easy rule to use. And it's got a lot of practical value when you're trying to connect what's going on in one problem when you're focusing on the nail and you want to connect it to what's going on in another story, like what's happening to the hammer. Let me uh, tell you a little story, it's sort of the classic story uh, about Newton's third law. There's a horse, and uh, the owner of the horse says, I'd like you to pull my cart, please. And the horse says, well, you know, I've been studying up on Newton's laws. And uh, I've learned that if I pull on the cart, Newton tells me that there will be an equal and opposite force pulling backwards on me. And so if it's equal and opposite forces, they'll cancel. And if forces cancel, there's no net force, and I won't be able to go anywhere. There'll be no acceleration. So I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to try. So you know, this is an exasperating situation. Fortunately, the horse owner has learned a little physics and says, yeah, you're misapplying Newton's third law. You're almost there. Newton's third law relates force of A on B and force of B on A. It's telling you about forces on different objects. In this case, let's separate our attention momentarily and look at the forces acting on the horse. And then we'll focus our attention on the forces acting on the cart, two separate objects if you're going to apply Newton's second law, you have to pick an object and pay attention to it. To apply Newton's second law, you need to know all the forces acting on the object. Here is the horse, and this is the one we're thinking about. This is the one the horse was telling me about. Force on the horse by the cart. It's definitely backwards. The cart is behind it, holding it back. And if it tries moving forward, there is definitely a backward force. You can feel it. If it was standing on ice, its feet would scrabble, and it's probably right. It wouldn't go anywhere. So why does the horse move? Why was the horse wrong in its analysis? The horse said there's another equal and opposite force. And there is, but it's not acting on the horse. The equal and opposite force is acting on the cart. What acts on the horse? What is acting on the horse? If you're standing on the ground and you're trying to pull a cart, what do you do? You push with your paws against the ground, and you push backwards. You drive your feet backwards, so the force on the ground by you is backwards. And now Newton's third law says there will be an equal and opposite force of the ground on you. And the way I write things is force on the horse by the ground, and that's forwards. The horse pushes the ground backwards, so the ground pushes the horse forward. That's an action-reaction pair. That's the lingo that people use. It's Newton's lingo. Newton didn't write Newton's third law with the words I did. The third law statement was, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. But we tend not to use those words anymore. We use forces.